Now I'm proud to select with the ninth pick in the 2020 draft from the Ottawa 67s of the OHL, Marco Rossi. Minnesota selects from St. Petersburg, Murat Kuznadinov. Jesper Wasted from Lulia. Carson Lambos from the Winnipeg Ice. From your garden, Liam Ogren. Hunter A. Charlie Strammel. Rasmus Kupalainen. Riley Height from Prince George, Western Hockey League. We want players that have that fiber in them, the work ethic, their coachability, so that when they are presented with information and resources, they use them and, and, and continue to develop. Development camp is honestly the only opportunity that we have any time during the year where we can have all of our prospects together. It's just about building this group here internally that for us, it's invaluable. You guys know this one? You're trying to help the next generation of players to get to the next level. And um, if we can pass on a little bit of information like that, I think it goes a long way. I loved in the third, the amount of speed that he was carrying, a lot of pucks around, carrying them around the net. We're constantly trying to get these players prepared and help them find a game that will correlate into the professional game. When you do that cut, try not to get stuck. All the development staff with Minnesota are unbelievable. We've built a, a pretty good relationship and uh, you know I'm looking forward to furthering that down the road. We'll have two forwards here. We don't go back into the D zone against the boards, okay? It's a winning culture and uh, I think uh, I'm at the right place uh, if I want to win. Shoulder check, get your eyes up. Up. This is a big boy business. Push, 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 push. We have good people, we have a good culture. Because I was like a little tear in my eye. I'm like, you did it, that's what we want. You are representing yourself and you are representing the Wild logo. We want to win. Well, welcome to development camp, fellas. I just want to say we're extremely happy and proud to have all you guys here to be part of our organization and, and find out what we're all about. Development camp is exactly that. It's about development. This is not an evaluation camp, okay? We do some testing to help you guys be better players. There will come a time, a point in time, like training camp, like rookie tournament, where you will be evaluated. But these next couple of days are all just to help you guys. Get to know each other, have some laughs, work your ass off, just have fun. You guys are in the greatest spot in your career. You're young, you're sitting in an amazing facility like this for a National Hockey League team. Just think about that. When you were a little kid, would you ever be in this spot? You know? It's pretty awesome that you guys are here right now. So enjoy it. Just get your head up, shoulder check, take a look, hit me on the tape and I'll give it right back to you. Okay, ready, go. Nice. Who makes up the development department? Uh, I'd be myself and then uh, Matt Hendricks, of course, a Minnesota guy, really great uh, NHL career and uh, worked his way up, played in the East Coast Hockey League and then the American Hockey League and then found his way to the National Hockey League, which to me is a great story for these young guys to see and recognize and to hear about. And also Cody McLeod as well, who had a similar path. And uh, they all had to work for it. We all, all three of us had to work our way through it, through the minors and then to the National Hockey League. And we had to fight like heck to, to remain in the National Hockey League. So I couldn't imagine a better uh, duo to, to do this with. If you're F1, make sure you hold that net front for a quick second. Just simulate a game being the net front guy. I love being around hockey. Working with Bomber and Handy's been great. They're great people and uh, they've taught me a lot my first year and um, they've been mentoring me uh, along the way and it, uh, 
it's been great. Oh, nice shot, Louie, that's it. The group of people here, everyone from management down to coaching staff and players, it's just incredible. They really run it right here and their, their main focus is development and they take pride in that. Hard Liam, hard lift. That's it. It means a lot. You always want to hear when you do good things and uh, you want to hear when um, I need to work on something. So uh, I think it's really good. Uh, they helped me a lot. Of course, when we draft our players, they still go back and play junior hockey, play in Europe play in Russia, play in college over here. But we just want a voice and a relationship and build that relation between us, the coaches, and our player, just to be involved in the daily process of their development. And whether that's off the ice or on the ice, um, we just like to be a part of it. We're constantly trying to get these players prepared and help them find a game that will correlate into the professional game. They're not yet a finished product when they leave the junior ranks to the college ranks but they're going to be closer than they were when they started. So, uh, the footer court, that first one over there will play team one versus team six. And then the, the close one here, team two versus team five. Double elimination tournament. So if you lose two, you're done. So bring your A game, fellas. Yeah, the beach volleyball, it's become a staple for us. Lake Minnetonka is a beautiful spot. And they go to Lord Fletcher's, it's a beautiful location and they get to see what Minnesota is about and what it looks like in the summer. Over, over, over. Nice. Well, it's been pretty competitive. You can tell the guys are sweating, a lot of sand sticking to them, a lot of chatter, camaraderie's good. I don't know, I think it's been a great event. It, it always is a lot of fun. Some of us are upright when you start to lean. So think about it this way. If I'm straight up here, right, as I move, I can only go with so much speed. As soon as I start to lean and pull, you guys see how I start to accelerate, start to move. So try to make sure that we lean each way, okay? So I started with the Wild about a decade ago, and I do a lot of the, uh, the development camp stuff. I do a lot of the preseason stuff, preseason skates. Um, some skates with the guys in the summer, and it's evolved into I even go into Iowa during the season. My main focus during the season is I skate a lot of the injured guys, so I rehab the injured guys coming back um, from injury, trying to get them practice ready uh, when they're ready. We're just gonna start with the basic arc drill. So toes are out, okay, hips are open. I, I, we're gonna go through it once, and then I'll go through uh, some of the skills we'll do off of it. But if you have to, slow it down. I'd rather see you guys hold it, so toes are out here, just hold. Okay, then try to race through it. You know, Andy Ness, is, he's an incredible skater. You know, I thought I was a pretty good skater on my edges and then watching him skate is just, you know, it's almost comical in a way because he's so smooth, he's so good at, at what he does and he knows his stuff. I really want to just work on positions, edges, balance, and then we get into more specific type of things where we work some agility work, we'll work on some cutbacks, some transitions, things like that. The building blocks are really the, the important things. Getting guys in the right spots, the positions on their skates. They understand how the skates work, how their body's gonna work, their body positions work. It's great because we get questions from everything from, you know, how far over do I lean doing this? Where should my stick positioning be in this? You know, uh, all the way to um, skate sharpening questions. But what do you notice? 90 degrees, right? But you see the flex and it's that forward lean as well. And he's a part of that puzzle and he understands the movement of skating. But we also use him too as a skills guy too and he's, he's got some really good drills. The guys just like to, they're just different. They're just different than a hockey coach would work on during the season. They're not a finished product, but they are obviously athletic uh, and gifted enough to where when you do teach them things, they can retain and they can pick it up pretty well. And when they feel it, they understand it, then they'll implement it within the game. Great job, grab some water, and we'll get going. Okay, ready? Some water and meet me at the board.
So guys, this is how we're going to start today. We're going to do weigh-in, body fat, grip strength. Once you're done with that, you're going to come on the turf. Andrew's going to put you through a warm-up. Once you get done with the warm-up, you're going to go to the force plates with Trey. You'll do the force plate jumps. You guys are going to then do the broad jump over here with Hannah. After the trap bars, then we're doing an interval test in the bike. Okay? The bike test is 0.2 miles, as hard as you can. Rest two and a half minutes. 0.2 miles, as hard as you can. Rest two and a half minutes. Then you finish one more time. Okay? And we're just looking to see essentially how much power you guys can generate. Sound good? All right. Two point zero three. We do some different fitness testing to get a baseline on some of the new kids that are coming in, and then kids that are returning to you know just see kind of where they're at. But we also try to use it as more of a education week or the few days that they're here to show them how we do things off the ice, different ways that we can train, different ways they can train. One point eight nine. Right. We're just testing different athletic characteristics that they can display. So speed, power, strength. And then we use those results that we collect throughout the week to tell them like, hey, here's some exercises that you can do, or here's a loosely defined program that you can follow that might help maybe balance them out as an athlete. Good. So with the bike test, it's an interval test. We did three separate reps um, on the assault bike, and what we're looking at is the max watts that they can generate and then the average watts that they can generate in each repetition and then as a whole as well. 1.64. It's a hockey team, not a weightlifting team, so we don't get a ton of time with the guys, but we just try to share our knowledge of what we have, and if they have any questions, try to answer it, and let them know that we're always a resource if they have questions or concerns or thoughts about anything. And we just wanna make sure that they know they have resources and, and we're giving them knowledge that we think will benefit them and hopefully that they can use and implement. Simon, how are Simon look at the shirt. Yeah. Winner, winner, winner. winner. chicken dinner. What's that? Yeah, are you Mikey Milne? And who else? All right, okay. Yeah. So what'd you think of the week? Super fun, like okay. always, you know. That's been great, great to be back, meeting everyone again. Uh, yeah, super fun. What are your thoughts on you as a player from last year's Devo camp to this year's Devo camp? What do you see differently? Um, better skater, uh, much stronger, uh, especially like when we do those skating drills with Andy, I feel like I have much more power in my legs when I skate. And yeah, just more, more experience as well from last year. Learned a lot, and yeah. What do you got going on for the rest of summer? What are, what are we focusing on here for you? Putting on some more weight, and I think just getting a lot stronger in the lower body, building a better base, um, ultimately being ready to be here in September. You know, Simon, I know you and I had some discussions last season when times were tough for it. I want to give you a little feather in your cap because this is a process for every young player, especially a young defenseman. You're on your path and you just got to stay on it. And you got to keep pushing and pushing and pushing to find your best. You know, you're here, your best is here. So stay on your path. You can still see playing your first year pro, how much better you've gotten. And sometimes you don't realize it your first year because the AHL, NHL is a tough league. So when you come back here, or you're around this, uh, your peer group a little bit, then you realize, wow, I got a lot better. So appreciate that. And it's great for other guys. It's great for the young guys to come in and be around guys that have played a year pro already. You stuck around here in main camp last year for a while, did you not? A few extra days, right? Exactly. You earned, it. you earned it. So there's people in this organization, we all do, we all believe in you, but there's people too in that co on that coaching staff that see something and believe in that. So just know people do believe in you. And we're, absolutely. Good job, buddy. Good job. Good Thank job this week. Much. Yes, of course. Absolutely, Thank buddy. You. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. All right. Get Thank back home and do the work. All right. Yeah. All right, buddy. Good, good job. If you need anything, reach out to us. All right, Rox. Good job, buddy. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, man.
Well, I remember when I first came to here to this facility and I was like, wow, I never seen anything like that. It was just awesome. It was good to, good to meet with these guys. I think it all started in the Lord Jenners. I first feeling they're like not really good. Then it was continue for the rest of the season. I felt like always so tired and I didn't know just why. I can't probably count. It was like probably eight to ten tests. So that was a that was a tough time, but I already knew there is something going on. I just was driving with my parents back home. I got a call with an unknown number, so I just I just it up and I was a doctor talking to me and said uh, I'm diagnosed with the Hodgkin's lymphoma. The worst part about it, it was I had to sit a pretty pretty long time just on the chair and I was getting like my chemo and I felt I felt really bad. You feel like you want to throw up but you can't and you are so tired. My sister, she was trying to keep me busy playing like tennis and stuff like that. So I, I, I would feel like a normal person. And I cannot forget my girlfriend and their family because they helped me, they helped me a lot too. So I really appreciate that and I will never forget that. He probably handled it better than us, to be honest with you, because obviously you're heartbroken to hear this about a young man. All he kept saying is, I'm okay, I'm gonna get through this, I'm gonna be better for it, and I wanna play for the Minnesota Wild one day. 6 October, that was the probably best day of my life because I found out I'm cancer free. And I probably will never forget about that. And I just remember when I walk out from the office and tell my parents that was, that was awesome. Yeah, I asked my doctor if I can start like do something and she said, yeah, you can, but no like Olympic records, that's what she said. I said, okay. So I started a little slow in a, in a gym. I first time on the ice in uh, December. He handled it like a warrior. He went through his year that he had to. He fought his fight and he won to come play in the, in the showcase and then to come to uh, NHL main camp and not look out of place at all. This is a win for Pavel Novak and we couldn't be more proud of, of him. And we're just so happy that we have a, that type of person in our organization. Well, honestly, I had no idea where I'm going to be. Uh, of course, I, I wanted to be in Des Moines, but uh, I understand I need to get the games a nice time. And uh, like I said, I'm very happy to be here, very happy to play a lot of minutes and help my team winning the games. Being off for 18 months, you, you have rust. And, you know, after the initial adrenaline wears off, you know, you get into the, the rigors of of pro hockey, which it's a long season, it's a grind. You're playing against men on a day-to-day -day basis and it wears on you. I do my blood work every six weeks and every time before I get the results, I'm kind of like uh, nervous. Is that gonna be okay or are they gonna find something? So I think it's prob probably not, not gonna change uh, for the rest of their life because it is how, what it is, but uh, I have a uh, little bit of issues uh, with the blood work actually uh, probably like two months ago. For, uh, for like week or 10 days, but I, I, of course I was a little scared of like what's going on. But we figured out it was like nothing, nothing wrong about like cancer side. Getting good news, how much of a relief was that? <laughs> I mean, it's been great. Uh, I, it's been kind of like a Christmas present before, for, uh, for me because uh, I think uh, I got this news around like 20th of December and I was like, yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my Christmas present. He's gained a lot of traction this year, and you know, especially of late, he's playing uh, really well, and uh, he's a he's a big time player for us, and we rely on him for a lot of our offensive upside. And I'm excited, along with a lot of other people, are excited for what the future holds for Pap. I'm happy right now, but also, you know, I want to get back to Des Moines and play in the AHL like every other guy. I want to fight and hopefully get some NHL games too. Well, we're in uh, beautiful state of Michigan right now, heading into Saginaw to watch the Spirit take on the Owen Sound attack. 
It's kind of a prospect face-off tonight. We've got Hunter Haight going up against Servak Petrovsky. So exciting night for a development guy. Well, you better love to travel. <laughs> um, you've got to have a very committed family at home. I'll say that first and foremost with my wife Kim and my kids Lennon and Gunner. They understand that this is my passion and that how much love I have for the game of hockey and how important and valuable it is for me to give back. And I would assume that's the same for, for both Brad's family and Cody's family as well. On left, we got Bluer! big year for all of us here in, in Saginaw, you know, with hosting the Mem Cup and uh, our goal is to, you know, be OHL champions as well going into that. So, yeah, everyone's hungry, everyone wants to win, everyone wants to be, uh, you know, at their best every day. <laughs> Feedback coming into this season from development camp was, you know, just sticking all the little details and was just trying to push myself to be the best and work the hardest, uh, you know, in practice, uh, skill skates, everything, and including games. He wants to be a pro. He just wants to win. He wants to develop. So a kid like him that's a leader and does care about playing in Minnesota and really, really wants to be a Minnesota player is doing everything he can uh, to become the best version of himself. We work through pods right now um, in development, so we have pod A, pod B, pod C. When I have his pod, I'll work with him for that month. So I usually end up getting each player about twice a season. So I'll work with him for two months throughout the year. We expect our guys to, to check in weekly with us, and we like to know where their confidence level is and, and how they're doing in terms of their mental game. Every week on Tuesdays, um, Minnesota has us fill out these six these six questions, and you know one's based on your health. Uh, the second one's based on things you've done well in this past week. Three is what you need to improve on. Four is what you're going to focus on in this week's practice. Number five is a video with with coach. If you've had any any video about you know previous games or or details in practice, and then six is you know your confidence level, how you're feeling um, going into the next week's games. It helps them grow up a little bit. You know, they have to put this on their schedule as something that they set reminders so that they don't forget. They get a better understanding analytically what drives goals and then in their play, are they doing those things that lead to goals or not? And if not, how can we fix it and get it so they can achieve that goal or whatever the case may be? So if a player takes ownership and development, that's when you see the, the best results. How are we doing? What a game. Yeah. Holy crap. Feeling good? Yeah. Yeah? Last time I saw you live was November, and the maturity level in your overall game has gone way up. Your routes, your defensive positioning, you seem to have a wherewithal where a knack for, you're kind of watching over everything that's happening instead of getting just focused instead of on the puck, which is a huge sign of you're growing up. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. He's given me feedback on things I did right, things I did wrong, what he liked in my game, what he wants to see more of, and you know, it's all about developing uh, so that you can make that jump to uh, to pro hockey. All right, buddy. Proud of you. Get a win tomorrow. Keep this thing rolling. Okay. Our amateur staff drafts these guys, and immediately we jump in their corner with them. We support them. We believe in them. We trust them and we want nothing but the best for them. Um, I think the biggest thing for you is the mentality of everything, right? You know, I've been sacrificing a lot in my life before this, so I'm just gonna keep on working hard, getting better every day, and try to make the team, and yeah, that's been a dream since I was a little kid. So I can move in here and then jab, and then my other foot turns. There's a lot of improvement that they can make and there's a lot of improvement that they do make, and there's a lot of improvement that they have to make if they want to play at the next level. You can always be faster, stronger, and, uh, and smarter as well. It's, uh, it's all about training, and uh, it's a grind, and uh, it never stops. I'm just going to go straight up, come down, and then reset. We'll record the weight. We're going to do that three times. Our ultimate goal here is to win a Stanley Cup. A lot of it is about emotion. you got to bear down a little bit more. It was an off night. It was nighttime. 
lot about of it is about playing hard for each other and connecting with one another. You know, we want to get in front of them. We want to have a voice. We want them to be here. We want them to be involved in this, in our facility, around our guys. It's just about building this group here internally that for us, it's invaluable. That probably is the most important thing for the future success uh, we feel um, in this organization.